I'll delete that if we get the train. Yes, cool on that. Something interesting happened when I looked back at this footage and I had these couple days where I fished with Tony and Carl and then actually two days later fished with Matt and Jay and they were eventful days in that we moved a ton of fish and we only caught one and when I started looking back I was like I didn't really save a lot of footage on missed fish etc so I wasn't sure what to do with that footage and i got talking with dave and talking with kyle i'm like those two days were almost spitting images of one another and then i remembered that kyla and i fished with our daughter katie and the day in between and that we had also seen a lot of fish and caught one fish and i was like what what were the similarities there and i already showed you guys the footage of catching that fish with katie and that was one of the last fish we ever put in the bass cap before I sold it. That footage is right here. And I started looking back at it and all three days were very similar. Temps were between 17 and 20 degrees Celsius. And the water temps were right around 66 degrees. And something else really kind of struck out at me is that both fish in the case of the additional footage were caught right around moonset. And I went back and I looked at the footage of the fish I caught with Kyla and Katie, and it was caught just prior to moonset. So in the span of three days, we had caught three fish on days that otherwise we had seen a lot of fish and moved a lot of fish. And the only fish that we really caught those days were the ones that we caught right at moonset. So it was very interesting looking back. And that's the fun part about doing the editing and the videos like this for you guys is that I get to go back, look at my notes and see, you know, what was the same and what was different. So before we look at the catches from Carl and from Matt, let's just go back, have a quick look at that catch that I had with Katie and Kyla, and then we'll fast forward to the two new catches. It's wood. There's one. Katie, grab my rod. It's a little tiger. Oh. But let's just add him just to see. Here. Is that a tiger musky? That's just it, man. You can never have too much stuff. I have two guys, and I thought that was a mini. My old lady's in the collecting beach glass of all sorts of things. Oh. Okay. Okay. I'll delete that if we catch a fish right now. So her and her sister and her mom with fish, 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 fish. my buddies tony who owns this island right here <laughs> it's not really officially his island he's just he's got like a little wee sign that it's hidden in there somewhere <laughs> but i'm here with tony and we just said that when we need something to happen even for us for dave and i we come to this spot it's a really good spot and carl's been throwing the suic for a couple hours couple now hours now we're like, you can't go wrong with a suic that's like mostly black. It's not a monster, but on a day where we've had bluebird skies, not a lot of wind, we're starting to get a change in the weather. I think things are going to happen, so we'll kind of move quick here. We got a nice little fish in the net. I'll let Carl grab it. So while Carl grabs that, this is the suic. It's one of the red eye ones that looks like a dead fish on its side. I cut the hooks because it, it was hooked pretty bad. So. Always cut the hooks if you guys have to. Really? 
I think he's getting her out here. Oh, it's just a weak, cute little guy. Little girl. <laughs> but you know what? Those ones count too. And on a tough day, that boosts your morale. So we're gonna get this one back and we'll be right back with you guys. And put it towards me. Pull your left hand out of the way. Lean it over the edge of the boat a bit more so I can get you in the shot. There you go. She's ready as you are. Let her go. Don't come up, Carl. Don't come up. <clears throat> right on, Carl. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> you can never go wrong with a Stuart, guys. We're in prime time. We're going to keep freaking slinging baits here. We'll be back with you guys in a bit. One's coming on me. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Or it could be on Jay. Something come off the rocks here. That must have been... In October guys it has been I don't ever say it's been a grind but it's been a freaking grind we've seen some big fish today fishing with my buddies Matt and Jay back here we've had what have we gone zero for four I think something like that yeah they've been moving on rubber we've been throwing other stuff and we've moved a couple on bucktails we come back onto a spot that we we're here earlier and we just moved one and Matt cast out with the Red October. That sounds like a broken record on the channel here this year. It's a decent one, it's not huge, but it's low 40s. So Matt's gonna bump it and we'll have a good look at it. That's actually a pretty nice fish. All right, let's get her on the wreck and rock board here. Forty one. Forty one and a half, kind of where we thought, low 40s. Let's get her up and have a look. She's got a little mark on her gills on this side. Eh? She's old injury there. By the looks of it. All right, let's get this one back and we'll get after it again. And then just send her nose towards me if you can. she's ready you can just let her go okay push her out a bit if she's ready and I'll get a shot of her going under all right whenever you're ready, her if she push. feels good she's good Thanks, babe. Right. Woo! Yeah, brother. Today's Little Tykes Breakdown is brought to you by Stealth Tackle Leaders. In 2023, we started working with John at Stealth, and we were so happy to start using his stuff. And we had zero failures in 2023. And he made up some nine inch solid wire leaders with welded rings on the end for us and that was part of our best of gear for 2023 that video is right here so if you guys are looking for leaders of all types check out stealth tackle well guys like i said in the intro 
When I look back on this footage, all three of those fish were really similar, but especially these fish here, the one that Carl caught and the one that Matt caught, so on the same body of water, two days apart, similar lures. And when I look back at the catches, similar structure and right around moonset. So I just thought, you know, in order to break these down, you could look at these spots and think they're not the same at all. But when you start looking at what makes a good spot a good spot, there's a lot of similarities. And Carl cut his on a nine inch Suic. It was one of the red eyes, which actually has a little eye on the bottom. So it kind of uh, mimics a dead fish. I don't have one here, but it was on a nine inch Suic. And then Matt caught his on a shallow tube, not set up the same as mine. It was one of his own, but you can tell it was either the shallow or the hybrid with the nose attachment. And I believe he had another hook on this bottom hook hanger here, which is what a lot of guys do. But the shallow tube model was really key in this spot, as you see as we break it down, because he was casting right up tight over shallow rocks. Okay, guys, I put both on one sheet of paper here on the little tykes board because they're they're not big spots and they don't warrant you know breaking down the whole thing that's something that we may look at you know at a later date taking a small spot and breaking it down as a larger area on how we approach it but on Carl's fish where we said we were at Tony's Island we fish that whole island lots but what's key about it is that Pretty typical Canadian Shield island with lots of rocks around it. A good depth around the island of like 8, 9, 10 feet and then drops right away to like 16 and then down into that 25 foot area. And you could pretty much fish anywhere around an island like this. And like you guys had heard, we had, had a bluebird day, not a lot of wind. And we just started to see a shift in the wind and we had rolled around the island that way casting up towards it and we're just trying to hit basically that eight foot break line i never try to cast right tight to an island like that when you do have an eight and then like a 16 foot drop so it's a pretty steep drop we're always trying to target that transition line and carl was at the front casted right up and that fish hit way out from the boat on that suic and again i'm just going to say that was sitting right on that transition line so for us, the big takeaway on a spot like that is that you don't have to cast super shallow all the time. And you hear us talk about it a lot on the channel. Start deep, work your way up. Matt and Jay and I fished all over this body of water on the day we were out. We moved a ton of big fish. I moved one on a tube that you know, we pegged in that 52 range. So it was, it was the kind of day where things were going... Jay had moved a lot of fish on a Medusa, and I think he lost three that were hooked up on a Medusa. One starting first thing in the morning, and then a couple scattered throughout the day. So it was a fishy day. We were seeing fish. We kind of knew things were going to happen, but as we're getting closer to the end of the day, we're getting frustrated because we, we're just not converting, and we're not you know making the best of our chances. So we had moved back into this open water reef area, because we had seen fish move fish earlier in the day. So we come in and again, it sets up a lot like this. This is an island, but if you look at this three to six foot top of this reef, it almost acts like an island because very rarely we see fish sitting exactly on top of it. They're always just sitting on the edges. There's times in the evening, yeah, they might move right up on top of there, but for the most part, they're going to be sitting in you know, that six to eight foot, four to eight foot kind of transition zone. And you can work around an open water reef. Doesn't matter which direction. In this case, we are coming across here. And just casting, trying to hit it. And you can hear me say on the live scope that I had a fish follow in. And actually in the video, you can actually see my live scope screen. It's, it's a very steep drop coming off of there. And those fish were sitting, you know, really tight to that six to eight foot drop, right where the reef starts to drop down. Matt cast out the front. That fish rolled right off of the edge of that rock, like basically right on that transition. Rolled, splashed, and then he hooked up on it. 
And the interesting thing about a spot like this, there's open water reefs all over Shield Lakes. It's finding them, mapping them out with auto chart or whatever your, your mapping does. And again, figure out so you can stay off of structure, cast up to it. It's really easy on a spot like this to just want to cast right on top of it. And you, you don't give yourself enough time to kind of find those fish that are sitting off of that transition. So again, they break down very similar. And the fish that Kyla and I caught with Katie was an open water reef. And we had casted, you know, probably three quarters of it. And the fish come off of the deep breaking side of it. So you start to look at these similarities. If I was on a musky trip up here for the first time, and three days in a row, we're seeing fish on similar structure. So now you got a pattern. You're starting to see fish at a similar time of day. Moonset, that's another part of the pattern. You're starting to see fish eat similar styles of baits. You can start to put that picture together for you guys and build that pattern. And it, it can really shorten your learning curve of a shield lake if you pay attention to all the details we talk about details a lot on the channel, just paying attention to those little wee things that can make or break a trip. When you start paying attention to all the little details, you're going to gain confidence and you're going to want to watch the video right here. It's going to help you guys pick confidence baits that help you succeed on your Canadian trip. And hopefully that confidence details will equal success. And until next time, 54 Bust is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.